Two's problem that says the vent rod is supported at A, B, and C by smooth journal bearings. Determine the components of reaction at the bearings if the rod is subjected to a force of 800 newtons. The bearings are in proper alignment and exert only force in the reactions on the rod. So, the first thing is to draw the free body diagram. We know that this F is equal to 800 newtons then we know that the bearings have reactions, right? But what are those reactions? Well, parallel to the bearing, we have a BC reaction here, and a BY reaction. We don't have a BX reaction because that's where the bearing go, um, is perpendicular to. Same idea with C. Let's call this CY. Let's call this CX and A, let's call this AC and AX. So the first thing I will tell you to do is let's write the sum of the forces in all the X axis and then uh, figure it out. But in order to do that, we need all the forces in Cartesian vector form and where F is not in Cartesian vector form, but that's very easy to find. So we know that F is equal to 800 newtons, right? F in dx is equal to F cosine of 60 cosine of 30 because F cosine of 60 is this line right here by trigonometry. And then this line right here, which is Fx, is F cosine of this line right here, which is I mean, F cosine of 30 of this line right here, which is F cosine of 60. So that's why that's like that. And this is equal to 346.41 newtons. F of Y is equal to F cosine of 60 sine of 30, because this is F of Y. And that uh, similar idea, except that you do the sine towards the end, and that is equal to 200 newtons. And f of c is equal to minus, because it's going down, f sine of 60, which is this line right here by trigonometry. That is equal to minus 692.82 newtons. So now we can do the sum of the forces in the x, the y, and the c and try to figure some stuff out. So in the x, we got 346.41, which is the x component of the force, plus ax plus cx, and that is equal to zero. In the y, we got 200 plus by plus cy, and that is equal to zero. And in the c, we have minus 692.82 plus ac plus bz. So, as you can see, we have six variables and we only have three equations. So we need to figure something out, but I'm going to call this equation one, equation two, and equation three for reference. And this is all like trying to do math, try to find more equations and do some uh, engineering basic math, which is not basic at all. <laughs> some of the moments about the X axis, we know that is equal to zero, right? So in the whole system, if I was looking at, uh, Pretend this is my eye, stop my eye with the axis right there, and I'm looking at it this way. If I'm looking at the system that way, and I'm saying sum of the moments is equal to zero, then I know that the only forces creating moments about the, the x-axis are cx, which is right here. Let me see if I don't, no, I'm sorry. It's um, cy and ac. So this one and ac this one right here. These are the only two forces creating a moment about the x-axis. So why isn't, for example, AX creating a moment about the x-axis? Because it's parallel. So AX is not creating a moment. BY and BC are not creating a moment because they live right on top of the x-axis, so they're not trying to turn it. Correct? And uh, the force acts right at the origin, which is right on the x-axis, so it's also not trying to turn it anywhere. So that being said, we know that CY is creating a moment of minus two because it's trying to turn it clockwise. And that's the distance right here, CY. 
minus 2 AC. They're both trying to turn the whole system clockwise, as if I was looking at it from the top of the positive x-axis. And that is equal to 0. That means that AC is equal to minus CY. And look, we got a fourth equation. Now, we're going to do similar thing of some moments around Y, as if I was looking at it through here. And remember, I'm saying that if I, I was looking at it through here, I'm saying clockwise is negative. So we know that the moments, the forces creating moments about the Y are CX and BC. And the moment created by CX is 2 times CX. And BC is times 1. So that's fine. And all the other forces are not creating moments because they're either parallel or at the axis. And that is equal to 0. BC is equal to minus 2CX. This is the other function that I got from the moments. Now, some of the moments about C is equal to 0. And if I was looking at it from here, if I stab my eye with the positive C axis and I look down, then I will get that it is 2AX minus BY minus 1.75 CY is equal to 0. So if I solve for AX, I get that AX is equal to BY over 2 plus 0.875 CY. So now I have six equations. I got equations 1, 2, and 3, and these are the three equations that I got. And these three equations are going to help me modify equations 1, 2, and 3 and put them in terms of only three variables. So I'm going to plug this into equation 2, and I'm going to get a new equation called equation 4. So this equation comes out to be 200. If I plug, if I plug AC is equal to minus CY into equation 2, I get 200 plus BY minus AC is equal to 0. Now, if I plug this into equation 3, I get minus 692.82 plus AC minus 2CX is equal to 0. And then if I plug this into equation 1, if I plug this into equation 1, I get 346.41 plus 0.5BY plus 0.875CY plus CX is equal to 0. Hopefully I wrote that down from my notes. But then I know that that um, CY is also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually use this and plug it into, hold on, I call this equation... Or call this equation 5. So this equation still has an extra variable because right now I have three equations but I have four variables but I know that from equation from this equation right here I can replace CY with AC and I will get let me just erase it if I replace CY with AC I get negative AC right here negative AC. And now I have, let's call this equation 6. So now I have, uh, how many variables do I have? I have 1, 2, AC and BY, 3, CX. That's it. I don't have any, any new variables. So I have three equations, three variables. That means that I can solve the system and start figuring it out the rest of the um, equations. So let's do that in the next page. Let me turn my page on my notes. So I'm going to rewrite equation 6 right here, which is minus 0.875 AC plus 0.5 BY plus CX is equal to negative 346.41. So I'm going to plug in equation 4 right here and equation 5 right here. And once I plug those in, I get that minus 0.875 AC plus 
0.5 minus 200 plus AC plus 692.82 over negative 2 plus AC over 2 is equal to 346.41 negative this is negative so look we have one equation one variable so everything is in terms of AC so let's solve this equation minus 0.875 AC minus 100 plus 0.5 AC minus 346.41 plus 0.5 AC is equal to negative 346.41 so this is equal to 0.125 AC is equal to 100 that means that AC is equal to 100 we found one of the variables we plug this into equation 4 and we get that by is equal to 600 we plug this into equation 5 we get that cx is equal to 53.59 we can also find ax um, let me see what, what uh, function I found or function I used for finding ax okay so right here this is the last one I gotta do actually so once I find by and cx I can find bc which is minus 107.18 cy which is negative 800 and then with these two I can find ax which is equal to minus 400 and these are the reactions so basically to recap what we did is we wrote everything in x y and c we realized okay we have too many variables then we did the moments about the x y and c axis and we found more equations and then we just basically have to start getting equations plugging into other equations to start reducing it to have a system of three equations and three variables and then basically solve that system with some more basic math so let me go back to the answers right here final answer for the reactions at A, final answers for the reactions at B, and final answer for the reactions at C. If you made it this far, please make sure you go to finalanswer.com. There you're going to find all the videos I've been working on and six ways to support this channel. And make sure you check my merch store by going to store.finalanswer.com.